Feminist theology is a movement found in several religions, including Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, and New Thought, to reconsider the traditions, practices, scriptures, and theologies of those religions from a feminist perspective. Some of the goals of feminist theology include increasing the role of women among the clergy and religious authorities, reinterpreting male-dominated imagery and language about God, determining women's place in relation to career and motherhood, and studying images of women in the religion's sacred texts and matriarchal religion. <laughs> Methodology <laughs> <laughs> Development of theology According to Grenz and Olson in their review of feminist theology, it was developed in three distinct steps. They begin with a critique of the past such that they review the ways women have been oppressed, they seek alternative biblical and extrabiblical traditions that support the ideals feminists are trying to advance, and finally feminists set forth their own unique method of theology, which includes the revisioning of Christian categories, Grenz and Olson also mention, however, while all feminists agree there is a flaw in the system, there is disagreement over how far outside of the Bible and the Christian tradition women are willing to go to seek support for their ideals, it has frequently been said that feminist theology draws on women's experience as a basic source of content as well as a criterion of truth. There has been a tendency to treat this principle of experience as unique to feminist theology or, perhaps to liberation theologies and to see it as distant from objective source of truth of classical theologies. This seems to be a misunderstanding of the experimental base of all theological reflection. What have been called the objective sources of theology, scripture and tradition, are themselves codified collective human experience. Topic. Prehistoric religion and archaeology The primacy of a monotheistic or near-monotheistic great goddess is advocated by some modern matriarchists as a female version of, preceding, or analogue to, the Abrahamic god associated with the historical rise of monotheism in the Mediterranean Axis Age. Mother Nature sometimes known as Mother Earth is a common representation of nature that focuses on the life-giving and nurturing features of nature by embodying it in the form of the mother. Images of women representing Mother Earth, and Mother Nature, are timeless. In prehistoric times, goddesses were worshipped for their association with fertility, fecundity, and agricultural bounty. Priestesses held dominion over aspects of Incan, Assyrian, Babylonian, Slavonic, Roman, Greek, Indian, and Iroquoian religions in the millennia prior to the inception of patriarchal religion. Topic. Gender and God Others who practice feminist spirituality may instead adhere to a feminist reinterpretation of Western monotheistic traditions. In those cases, the notion of God as having a male gender is rejected, and God is not referred to using male pronouns. Feminist spirituality may also object to images of God that they perceive as authoritarian, parental, or disciplinarian, instead emphasizing maternal attributes such as nurturing, acceptance, and creativity. Carol P. Christ is the author of the widely reprinted essay, Why Women Need the Goddess, which argues in favor of the concept of there having been an ancient religion of a supreme goddess. This essay was presented as the keynote address to an audience of over 500 at the Great Goddess Re-Emerging conference at the University of Santa Cruz in the spring of 1978, and was first published in Heresies, The Great Goddess Issue, 1978, pgs. 8-13. Carol P. Christ also co-edited the classic feminist religion anthologies Weaving the Visions, New Patterns in Feminist Spirituality 1989 and Woman Spirit Rising 1979 the latter included her essay Why Women Need the Goddess. <laughs> New Thought Movement New Thought as a movement had no single origin, but was rather propelled along by a number of spiritual thinkers and philosophers and emerged through a variety of religious denominations and churches, particularly the Unity Church, Religious Science, and Church of Divine Science. It was a feminist movement in that most of its teachers and students were women. Notable among the founders of the movement were Emma Curtis Hopkins, known as the Teacher of Teachers. Myrtle Fillmore, Melinda Kramer, and Nona L. Brooks, with its churches and community centers mostly led by women, from the 1880s to today. 
within specific religions. Topic: <inaudible> Judaism. Jewish feminism is a movement that seeks to make the religious, legal, and social status of Jewish women equal to that of Jewish men. Feminist movements, with varying approaches and successes, have opened up within all major branches of Judaism. Various versions of feminist theology exist within the Jewish community. Some of these theologies promote the idea that it is important to have a feminine characterization of God within the Siddur Jewish prayer book and service. In 1976, Rita Gross published the article, "'Female God Language in a Jewish Context", Davka Magazine 17, which Jewish scholar and feminist Judith Plaskow considers, "'probably the first article to deal theoretically with the issue of female God language in a Jewish context." Gross was Jewish herself at this time. Reconstructionist Rabbi Rebecca Alpert Reform Judaism, Winter 1991 comments, the experience of praying with Siddur Nashim, the first Sabbath prayer book to refer to God using female pronouns and imagery, transformed my relationship with God. For the first time, I understood what it meant to be made in God's image. To think of God as a woman like myself, to see her as both powerful and nurturing, to see her image with a woman's body, with womb, with breasts, this was an experience of ultimate significance. Was this the relationship that men have had with God for all these millennia? How wonderful to gain access to those feelings and perceptions. Siddur Nashim was self-published in 1976 by Naomi Janowitz and Margaret Venick. In 1990 Rabbi Margaret Venick wrote the sermon, God is a woman and she is growing older, which as of 2011 has been published ten times, three times in German, and preached by rabbis from Australia to California. Rabbi Paula Reimers, Feminism, Judaism, and God the Mother. Conservative Judaism 46 1993 comments Those who want to use God, she language want to affirm womanhood and the feminine aspect of the deity. They do this by emphasizing that which most clearly distinguishes the female experience from the male. A male or female deity can create through speech or through action, but the metaphor for creation which is uniquely feminine is birth. Once God is called female, then, the metaphor of birth and the identification of the deity with nature and its processes become inevitable. Ahuva Zash affirms that using both masculine and feminine language for God can be a positive thing, but reminds her Reform Jewish readership that God is beyond gender is God male, female, both or neither. How should we phrase our prayers in response to God's gender? In the Union for Reform Judaism's Torah, too. Feminine imagery of God does not in any way threaten Judaism. On the contrary, it enhances the Jewish understanding of God, which should not be limited to masculine metaphors. All language that humans use to describe God is only a metaphor. Using masculine and feminine metaphors for God is one way to remind ourselves that gendered descriptions of God are just metaphors. God is beyond gender. These views are highly controversial even within liberal Jewish movements. Orthodox Jews and many conservative Jews hold that it is wrong to use English female pronouns for God, viewing such usage as an intrusion of modern feminist ideology into Jewish tradition. Liberal prayer books tend increasingly to also avoid male-specific words and pronouns, seeking that all references to God in translations be made in gender-neutral language. For example, the UK liberal movement's Siddur Lev Chadash does so, as does the UK reform movement's Forms of Prayer 2008. In Mishkan Tefillah, the American Reform Jewish prayer book released in 2007, references to God as he have been removed, and whenever Jewish patriarchs are named Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, so also are the matriarchs Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. In 2015 the Reform Jewish High Holy Days prayer book Mishkan Hanefesh was released, it is intended as a companion to Mishkan Tefillah. It includes a version of the High Holy Days prayer Avenue Malkinu that refers to God as both loving father and compassionate mother. Other notable changes are replacing a line from the reform movement's earlier prayer book, Gates of Repentance, that mentioned the joy of a bride and groom specifically, with the line, rejoicing with couples under the huppah, wedding canopy, 
and adding a third, non-gendered option to the way worshippers are called to the Torah, offering Hebrew for from the house of, in addition to the traditional son of or daughter of, in 2003 the female face of God in Auschwitz, a Jewish feminist theology of the Holocaust, the first full-length feminist theology of the Holocaust, written by Melissa Raphael, was published. Judith Plaskow's Standing Again at Sinai, Judaism from a Feminist Perspective 1991, and Rachel Adler's Engendering Judaism, an Inclusive Theology and Ethics 1999, are the only two full-length Jewish feminist works to focus entirely on theology in general rather than specific aspects such as Holocaust theology, thus, Standing Again at Sinai, Judaism from a Feminist Perspective 1991, is the first book of Jewish feminist theology ever written. Christianity Christian feminism is an aspect of feminist theology which seeks to advance and understand the equality of men and women morally, socially, spiritually, and in leadership from a Christian perspective. Christian feminists argue that contributions by women in that direction are necessary for a complete understanding of Christianity. Christian feminists believe that God does not discriminate on the basis of biologically determined characteristics such as sex and race. Their major issues include the ordination of women, male dominance in Christian marriage, recognition of equal spiritual and moral abilities, reproductive rights, and the search for a feminine or gender transcendent divine. Christian feminists often draw on the teachings of other religions and ideologies in addition to biblical evidence. Two authors whose works are vital to an understanding of feminist theology are Mary Daly and Rosemary Radford Ruther. Mary Daly grew up an Irish Catholic and all of her education was received through Catholic schools. She has three doctorate degrees. One from St. Mary's College in Sacred Theology, and two from University of Freiburg, Switzerland in Theology and Philosophy. From 1966 till the end of her career she taught at Boston College. While in her early works Daly expressed a desire to reform Christianity from the inside, she would later come to the same point as several other feminists, that Christianity is not able to enact the necessary changes as it is. Prologue Daly. On November 14, 1971, when she was invited to be the first woman to preach at Harvard Memorial Chapel. She used the opportunity to denounce Christianity as irredeemable for women and to call for women and men to make an exodus from the church. Almost all the women who attended this service walked out with her, as well as a few men. Her works include, The Church and the Second Sex 1968, Beyond God the Father 1973, GYN, Ecology, The Metaethics of Radical Feminism 1978, Pure Lust, Elemental Feminist Philosophy 1984, Webster's First Intergalactic Wikidary of the English Language 1987, An Outer Course, The Bedazzling Voyage 1992. According to Ford's The Modern Theologians, Mary Daly has done more than anyone to clarify the problems women have concerning the central core symbolism of Christianity, and its effects on their self understanding and their relationship to God. Rosemary Radford Ruther grew up Roman Catholic and attended Catholic schools through her sophomore year of high school. She was a classics major at Scripps College, worked for the Delta Ministry in 1965, and taught at Howard University School of Religion from 1966 to 1976. She has also been responsible for the production of some 22 books, dot and at least 500 articles. Rosemary Ruther has written on the question of Christian credibility, with particular attention to ecclesiology and its engagement with church world conflicts, Jewish Christian relations, politics and religion in America, and feminism. In the 1970s, Phyllis Tribble pioneered a Christian feminist approach to biblical scholarship, using the approach of rhetorical criticism developed by her dissertation advisor, James Muhlenberg. Christian Feminist theology has sometimes been critiqued as being focused on white women. This has resulted in the development of movements such as womanist theology, Asian feminist theology, and Muharista theology. The term Christian egalitarianism is sometimes preferred by those advocating gender equality and equity among Christians who do not wish to associate themselves with the feminist movement. Women apologists have become more visible in Christian academia. Their defense of the faith is differentiated by a more personal, cultural and listening approach. Driven by love. See also, Unity Church, Christian Science, Christian Theological Praxis and Postmodern Christianity. <laughs> Islam 
Islamic feminism is a form of feminism concerned with the role of women in Islam. It aims for the full equality of all Muslims, regardless of gender, in public and private life. Islamic feminists advocate women's rights, gender equality, and social justice grounded in an Islamic framework. Although rooted in Islam, the movement's pioneers have also utilized secular and European or non-Muslim feminist discourses and recognize the role of Islamic feminism as part of an integrated global feminist movement. Advocates of the movement seek to highlight the deeply rooted teachings of equality in the Quran and encourage a questioning of the patriarchal interpretation of Islamic teaching through the Quran holy book, hadith sayings of Muhammad and Sharia law towards the creation of a more equal and just society. Muslim-majority countries have produced more than seven female heads of state, including Benazir Bhutto of Pakistan, Maim Madior Boye of Senegal, Tansu Siller of Turkey, and Megawati Sukarnaputri of Indonesia. Bangladesh was the first country in the world to have consecutive, elected, female heads of state, Khalida Zia and Sheikh Hasina. Sikhism In Sikhism women are equal to men, see the verse from the Sikh scripture the Guru Granth Sahib. From woman, man is born. Within woman, man is conceived, to woman he is engaged and married. Woman becomes his friend, through woman, the future generations come. When his woman dies, he seeks another woman, to woman he is bound. So why call her bad? From her, kings are born. From woman, woman is born, without woman, there would be no one at all. Guru Nanak Topic. Hinduism Within ancient Hinduism, women have been held in equal honor as men. Manumriti for example states, the society that provides respect and dignity to women flourishes with nobility and prosperity. And a society that does not put women on such a high pedestal has to face miseries and failures regardless of how so much noble deeds they perform otherwise. Manumrithi chapter 3 verse 56. Within the Vedas the Hindu holy texts, women were given the highest possible respect and equality. The Vedic period was glorified by this tradition. Many rishis were women. Indeed, several of them authored many of the slokas in the Vedas. For instance, in the Rigveda there is a list of women rishis. Some of them are, Gasha, Gada, Gargi, Vishwara, Apala, Upanishad, Brahmjaya, Aditi, Indrani, Sarma, Ramsha, Maitreyi, Katyayini, Urvashi, Lopamudra, Yami, Shashwati, Shri, Laksha and many others. In the Vedic period women were free to enter into Brahmacharya just like men, and attain salvation. During Hindu marriage ceremonies the following slokas are uttered by the grooms but, these days, their import little understood or ever attempted to understand. O oh Bride! I accept your hand to enhance our joint good fortune. I pray to you to accept me as your husband and live with me until our old age. Rigveda Samhita Part minus 4, Sukta 85, Sloka 9702. O oh Bride! May you be like the Empress of your mother-in-law, father-in-law, sisters-in-law and brothers-in-law sisters and brothers of the groom. May your writ run in your house. Rigveda Samhita Part minus 4, Sukta 85, Sloka 9712 This beautifully lyrical sloka from the Atharvaveda clearly states that the woman leads and the man follows. The sun god follows the first illuminated and enlightened goddess Usha in the same manner as men emulate and follow women. Atharvaveda Samhita, Part 2, Kanda 27, Sukta 107, Sloka 5705 Women were considered to be the embodiment of great virtue and wisdom. Thus we have, O oh Bride! May the knowledge of the Vedas be in front of you and behind you, in your center and in your ends. May you conduct your life after attaining the knowledge of the Vedas. May you be benevolent, the harbinger of good fortune and health and live in great dignity and indeed illuminate your husband's home. Atharva Veda 14 January 64. Women were allowed full freedom of worship. The wife should do Agnihotra yagna, sandhya puja, and all other daily religious rituals. If, for some reason, her husband is not present, the woman alone has full rights to do yagna. Rigveda Samhita, Part 1, Sukta 79, Sloka 872. 
Moving on towards the monotheistic era of Hinduism when such ideals such as Shaivism and Vaishnavism, a specific deity for feministic worship was brought about under the Shaktism branch. From a Hinduism point of view women are equal in all measures to men in comparison. Neopaganism Some currents of neopaganism, in particular Wicca, have a ditheistic concept of a single goddess and a single god, who in Hieros Gamos represent a united whole. Polytheistic reconstructionists focus on reconstructing polytheistic religions, including the various goddesses and figures associated with indigenous cultures. The term theology is sometimes used in the context of the neopagan goddess movement, a pun on theology and theothea, goddess intended to suggest a feminist approach to theism. The goddess movement is a loose grouping of social and religious phenomena that grew out of second-wave feminism, predominantly in North America, Western Europe, Australia, and New Zealand in the 1970s, and the metaphysical community as well. Spurred by the perception that women were not treated equitably in many religions, some women turned to a female deity as more in tune with their spiritual needs. Education in the arts became a vehicle for the study of humanitarian philosophers like David Hume at that time. A unifying theme of this diverse movement is the femaleness of deity as opposed and contrasted to a patriarchal god. Goddess beliefs take many forms, some people in the goddess movement recognize multiple goddesses, some also include gods, others honor what they refer to as the goddess which is not necessarily seen as monotheistic, but is often understood to be an inclusive, encompassing term incorporating many goddesses in many different cultures. The term, the goddess, may also be understood to include a multiplicity of ways to view deity personified as female, or as a metaphor, or as a process, Christ 1997, 2003. The term, the goddess, may also refer to the concept of the one divine power, or the traditionally worshipped, great goddess of ancient times. In the latter part of the 20th century, feminism was influential in the rise of neopaganism in the United States, and particularly the Dianic tradition. Some feminists find the worship of a goddess, rather than a god, to be consonant with their views. Others are polytheists, and worship a number of goddesses. The collective set of beliefs associated with this is sometimes known as theology and sometimes referred to as the goddess movement. See also Dianic Wicca. Topic. Buddhism Buddhist feminism seeks to advance and understand the equality of men and women morally, socially, spiritually, and in leadership from a Buddhist perspective and within Buddhism. Topic. See also Atheist feminism Divine science Goddess movement Liberation theology Marianismo Ordination of women Patriarchy Reimagining Christian Feminist Conference Theology When God Was a Woman Book Topic Notes Topic References Ford, David F. ed. 1997 the Modern Theologians, An Introduction to Christian Theology in the Twentieth Century 2nd ed., Malden, M. A., B. Blackwell. ISBN 978-0-631-19592-4. Grenz, Stanley J., Olson, Roger E. Twentieth Century Theology, God and the World in a Transitional Age. Downers Grove, Ill, InterVarsity Press. ISBN 978-0-8308-1525-8. Ruther, Rosemary Radford. Women and Redemption, A Theological History 2nd ed. Minneapolis, Fortress Press. ISBN 978-0-8006-9816-4. Bibliography Anderson, Pamela Sue. A Feminist Philosophy of Religion, The Rationality and Myths of Religious Belief Oxford, Malden, Mass., Blackwell, 1998. ISBN 978-0-631-19383-8. Anderson, Pamela Sue, Clack, Beverly, eds. Feminist Philosophy of Religion, Critical Readings London, Routledge, 2004. 
ISBN 978-0-415-25749-7. Cassian, Mary A. The Feminist Gospel, The Movement to Unite Feminism with the Church. Wheaton, Ill, Crossway Books, 1992. ISBN 0-89107-652-2 Stone, Merlin, Compiler. Ancient Mirrors of Womanhood, A Treasury of Goddess and Heroine Lore from Around the World. Updated with a new pref. Boston, Beacon Press, 1990. NB, edition statement appears on the paperback book's cover, but not upon the T, P, or its verso. ISBN 0-8070-6751-2 Stone, Merlin. When God Was a Woman. San Diego, California, Harcourt Brace Jovanovich Publishers, Cop. 1976. ISBN 0-15696158-X. Topic external links Diamond, Anita. Holding Up Half the Sky, Feminist Judaism, Pateo's Directory of Baha'i Articles on Gender Equality Finch, Trevor R. J. Unclipping the Wing, A Survey of Secondary Literature in English on Baha'i Perspectives on Women Sholten Gutierrez, Melissa. An Ever-Evolving Judaism, Women Meeting the Needs of the Community. Pateo's.